All right, what's going on everyone and welcome back. So here in a few weeks, I'll be doing a big lawn overseeding project. So I need to get one of them peat moss rollers that'll help me apply my peat moss after I get my grass seed down. So let's order one up. Three hundred bucks. What? Let's build one. All right. To start this whole thing off, we need to lay out two twenty-four inch diameter circles with twelve lines that are thirty degrees apart from each other. These will act as the outer wheels for the drum that we're going to be building. This first circle is going to represent where we need to cut this wheel out and the second mark is going to be where all the center holes will be placed for our all three to join the two wheels together. Now we're going to cut it out, clean up the edges with the sander and then repeat the whole process again for the second one. I just use the first wheel as a template to make the second one. That'll ensure that they're both exactly the same. Now I'll be cutting all the all thread and spinning on the appropriate fasteners. This all thread's gonna be what we use to tie the two ends of this drum together. the two ends fastened by the all thread, you now have a giant bird cage. All right, with the main frame and this roller complete, it's time to move on to making the door. This door assembly is built out of two lengths of inch and an eighth dowel rod, and I'll be cutting these arch supports out of some half inch plywood. I use the outer diameter of the end wheel to determine the radius of these supports. That way that the wire mesh will kind of wrap around seamlessly. So now with the parts traced out on this plywood, I'll go over and cut them out on my bandsaw. There'll be four of these in total, but the two inside ones will be slightly different. With all the parts cut out, it's time to locate where this door is going to be on the drum itself. With the holes drilled in the outer portion of this drum, I can now align the dowel rod to use it as a stencil to locate the center of hole for drilling the holes in the dowel rod. Now with the hole placement determined on this dowel rod, I can take it over and finish drilling it out with the corresponding drill bit to accommodate a 3 8 hanger bolt. I made this quick jig just to help me determine how much of this dowel rod I needed to cut off to accommodate the outer supports. With all the door parts cut out, it's time to start assembling it. So I'll be using these 3 8 hanger bolts to act as the hinge. With the hinge portion figured out, it's now time to work on the latching side. So I'll be cutting these uh, radius slots where those 3 8 hanger bolts will slide in and out of. The latch side of this door goes together the exact same way as the hinge side, only difference being instead of having holes, there's those radius slots that I cut in to accommodate the 3 8 hanger bolts to slide into and then be clamped down. So 
So to add a little strength to this door is I used two of those end supports and notched out the ends to accommodate the inch and eighth dowel rod. With the notches cut out, it's just time to slide them in between the two dowel rods equally spaced apart. Then I'll throw in a couple two inch brad nails to help hold everything together while the glue dries. Now it's time to start wrapping this half inch by one inch wire cloth around the drum. So I picked uh, this wire cloth that's 30 inches wide, so that's the exact width of the inside of my drum. And I kept it classy by just using zip ties to fasten this wire cloth down to the drum. I installed this wire mesh in two phases. First being around the entire frame minus the door, then I trimmed the excess off and then came back and did the door separately, trimming that excess off. That way the door would hinge freely from the frame. So before I put the wire mesh over the door portion, I'm gonna go through and cut all the zip ties flush. Um, it's just a lot easier doing it um, without any mesh here. Um, so knock this out quick and then on to putting the mesh on the door. So nothing too different here, but instead of using zip ties, I'm just using some wood staples to fasten the wire mesh to the door. And just like before, I'll be cutting the excess off with this cutoff wheel. So the axle for this roller will be built out of two of these casters, so it has found center on the outer portion of the drum, pre-drilled four holes, came back and screwed the two casters in place, and then I'll be removing the wheel portion and that's where the handlebars for the spreader will actually be bolting to. So now it's just time to bend some offsets in these two outer pieces. This will make it um, a lot more comfortable to hold onto and kind of more natural feeling. So I bent 52 degree offsets in each side and then I'll be using just some standard um, T fittings to kind of make it more rigid and not flexy when you're moving it around. So I had this one inch electrical PVC left over from my driveway lighting project. So that's what I used. So I had to find, you know, honestly an electrical conduit, you don't use T's. So I just grabbed standard white PVC T's to make up the frame of this handlebar system.
this is an Amos boss. So real quick, it's 30 inches wide and has a 24 inch diameter. So it'll roughly hold about 7.8 cubic feet of peat moss. So roughly two of those bricks you'd buy at the store. It's got the door assembly where you actually add your peat moss in and use the casters for the axle. So I know the ones online are probably great products, but being that they range anywhere from $300 to $800, and with how little I'll probably use it, I couldn't justify forking that money out. So I spent about $150 bucks on making this, so about half the price, and I like building stuff, so it kind of just worked out. Uh, I'm gonna have a full materials list in my description below for anyone that wants to make their own. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.